This is the fire alarm office located on the sixth floor of City Hall, Chicago. This is the nerve center of the fire safety of four million people. Last year, 75,000 calls were handled right here. A call is received, the company nearest is alerted by telegraph and help is on the way, and fast. From the time the alarm box is pulled and the trucks roll on the street, only an average of 14 seconds have elapsed. Our story actually began about a month ago. There had been 17 fires in this area. The report had been the same on all of them. Fire Origin, department. suspicious, undetermined, or incendiary. And when the report reads that way, that's where I come in. My name is Ed McCook, Fire Investigation. Fire Department. 713 Averly. Thank you. A fire. 713 Averly. 713 Averly. Okay. Hello, Engine 40. Engine 40, a fire. 713 Averly. That one in the same area, isn't it? How do you stop a fire bug? Well, there's only one way. Oh. Find it. attorney's office, you learn to expect anything because it always involves people. There they were, the lookers. Why do people go to fires? Do they just happen to be down the block? Some people like to watch baseball. Others go to the neighborhood movie. Others like wrestling or read the newspapers. At a fire, you'll find all types. Why not? It's free entertainment. To some, it's a sickness. To others, it's a hobby. To me, it's a job. This uh, missed a couple of big ones in this area lately. Got any film left? About 30 feet. Why? Good, right, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to throw on a telephoto lens and take some close-ups of faces in that crowd without them knowing. I think there might be still some firebug hanging around? Could be. But I'm going to walk through that crowd, and I want you to follow me and get a close-up of everybody I stop. Okay? Okay. You got it all set up. Thread that up for me, will you? I hope you're getting somewhere, McCook. Well, all I can do is keep on trying. What are you up to, Mac? Where have you been? Over the lab, getting that film developed. You taking up a hobby on my time? No, no, not a hobby. That film was taken just an hour ago over at that fire at 713 Averly. I thought it was time we had a look at the lookers. Okay. Whenever you're ready. I know him. We all do. He's harmless. He's a member of the Fire Watchers Society. Mm-hmm. Retired captain. We see her all the time. Wonder when she has time to do her housework. There's two likely candidates. Yeah, I know them. They go to all the fires. And they were kind of disappointed it wasn't a bigger one. <laughs> How about that one? That's O.B. Henderson. He goes to all of them. Who 
Who's the kid? First time I've seen him. Hold it right there. Roll it back. Right there, stop. Does face mean anything to you? No, I don't think so. Get me a blow-up of that kid. Take that down to police identification, see if I can get a line on him. Well, if he's the one, Mac, you better catch him before he burns down the whole city. Identification had a line on him. The file showed him to be Mickey Hubbard, 1022 Avery Place. He wasn't at the listed address, but his mother worked at the Chicago Northwestern Yards. A cleaning woman for the railroad. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. You Mrs. Hubbard? Yeah, what do you want? Have I done something wrong? No, you haven't done it, Is this your boy? What's he done now, mister? Oh, we're not sure that he's done anything. We'd like to ask him a few questions. No use. He's no good. Send him away, you know. Yes, I know. When was he released from correction school? About two months ago, just before Christmas. Does he live with you? Not anymore. Do you know where he lives? No. Does he have a job? Yes, he does. Don't send him money home. Do you know where he works? No. Kino. Got a junkyard across the river. Thank you. I'll see if I can find him. Just a minute. One more thing. Now, where's your husband, the boy's father? In the penitentiary. What for? Uh, You know a kid named Mickey Hubbard? Should I? Are you a Keno, aren't you? Yeah, just like the sign says. I'm Jack Keno, I own this joint. Well, Mickey Hubbard's mother says that he works for you. No, he don't work here. Since when? Long time. Any idea where I might find him? No idea at all. Is your car? Yeah, I gotta have something to drive to work in. If it's any of your business. Thank you, you've been a big help. You got those insurance company reports? It's all our guts reports. Which ones? The list of claims on the new fires. Why don't you say so? Got a lead? There's a name like Jack Keno on here, I sure have. And you better keep looking. There isn't. Please, Keno, give me another chance. Look, if I've told you once, I've told you 50 times. Set them and get out. But no, you want to stand around and watch. Now you're hot, I can't use you no more. I'll get out next time, I promise. I won't hang around. You've said that a million times. I'll do like you said, Gino. I'll set them and I'll get out. You won't hang around anymore? I promise I won't. Okay, you got a deal. Twenty, is that all? That's all you get till you learn how to take orders. Now look, late tomorrow afternoon, 156 Roby Place. 156 Roby Place. Yeah, there won't be anybody there. Now get going. <laughs> He had to go out on a job, and he won't be back until late tonight. Do you understand me? Okay.
Linda. This is the operator. May I help you? One moment, please. I'll connect you with the supervisor. Supervisor, this is position 134. I think I have an emergency call. Someone can't talk. One on 56. This is the class department. This is the supervisor, Miss Cassidy. Will you take the call for me, please? It's one on 56. Thank you. I'll wait. Fire department. This is a call from the supervisor. I have an emergency call at 156 Roby Place. What is it, operator? We don't know. Is it an inhalator or a fire call? We don't know. It's someone who can't talk. We did call the police. All right, we'll handle it. Telephone operator requesting the fire department, 156 Roby Place. We'll give them a full stall arm response. Engine 40, 156 Roby Place, 156 Roby Place. 156, Roby, please. Right. That must be the box now. That's the same area. Call McCook. Yeah. Hello, Mac. Bill Grady in the office. We got a still in box alarm of fire. 156, Roby, please. Take it in. 156 Roby Place, that's the same area. I'm on my way.
only watch. Better, Mac. Well, I'm doing nothing. I know. That's why you were running. You were kind of a long way from home yesterday afternoon, Mickey. What were you doing at the fire on Roby Place? Why'd you run away when you saw me? Um, Did you start that fire? No. We're going to get the truth, Mickey. It may take a while, but we're going to get it. There was a fire at 713 Averly Place the day before yesterday. You have anything to do with that one? Johnson. Yes, hold on just a moment. It's for you. Thank you. Did you, Mickey? Last week... There was a fire started in a four-family dwelling at 255 East Princeton. Know anything about that? Thank you very much for calling. I'll see you outside a minute. I'll be right back, Mickey. Be thinking of those answers. Call us from the doctor at the hospital. That girl may not make it. And if she doesn't, he'll at least face manslaughter in addition to arson. You better not tell Mickey, not yet anyway. Yeah, he'd only please up. Any good answers yet, Mickey? All right, let's get back to that fire on Roby Place. What were you doing there? Watching. Watching what? Just watching. There's nothing that says I can, is there? Well, is there? Like to watch fires, Mickey? I guess so. Did you start it? I told you I didn't, didn't I? That's right, you did, but we don't believe you. We can't help you, Mickey, if you won't tell us the truth. Covering up for somebody, Mickey? Somebody pay you to set those fires? Would you be willing to go on the box? The box? What's that? The lie detector. That'll show whether or not you're telling the truth. How much did Kino pay you? Who? Kino, you worked for him. Never heard of him. All right, have it your way. That telephone call I got a couple of minutes ago was from the hospital. The girl that was in that fire may not live. I didn't know there was anybody in there. Kino said the place was empty. How about it, Mickey? He paid me. Keno paid me to sudden. Sergeant, pick up a man by the name of Jack Keno. Operates a junkyard over by the river. How many fires, Mickey? Right. Fifteen or twenty. I don't remember. And hold him. We suspect him of arson. He told me he had a system about insurance, that they'd never trace it to him, that I was safe. How much did he pay you? Fifty, sometimes a hundred. The last time, only 20. I didn't mean to hurt anybody. Honest, I didn't. Would you like something to eat? I guess. I think it cleaned up. How about a shave? I don't shave yet. The girl in the fire is going to live. Thanks to a lot of alert guys and a big assist from above. The fireman is a dedicated man. When the call comes in, he doesn't know whether he'll have to get a cat out of a tree or give up his life to save yours. We've come a long way since Mrs. O'Leary's cow. We had 300,000 people then, now almost 4 million. Some good, some bad. But I'm optimistic. The good always far outnumber the bad. Don W. Sharp, Warren Lewis production.